In The Trojan Women, Euripides describes the aftermath of the Trojan War. The play opens with Poseidon grieving over his beloved city of Troy, which the Greeks have conquered. Athena appears and implores Poseidon to aid her in bringing woe to the Greeks during their voyage home. Though she helped the Greeks defeat Troy, they incurred her wrath by profaning her temple. Poseidon agrees and the gods exit. The remainder of the play is concerned with the griefs of the vanquished women of Troy as they mourn the loss of their loved ones and lament their fate as slaves to the victorious Greeks. In a particularly disturbing scene, Greek messengers tear a Styanax away from his mother Andromache and cast him from the walls of Troy to his death. The play has a strong anti-war sentiment. Euripides demonstrates that there is no true victor in war. Though the suffering of the Trojans is obvious, Euripides uses the character of the Trojan prophetess Cassandra to illuminate the suffering of the Greeks. She argues that the Greeks are less fortunate than the Trojans because the Greek soldiers fought and died in a foreign land. They did not have the joy and comfort of seeing their families during the war like the Trojans. And though they may have won the war, Euripides warns that the men who sack cities make deserts around themselves and are destroyed. Like the previous two plays of Euripides that I have read, the Medea and the Hippolytus, this play contains harsh criticism of Aphrodite and the emotion of love that she represents. Both Trojan and Greeks curse the love triangle of Helen, Paris, and Menelaus as the cause of the war. Helen herself blames the goddess Aphrodite for charming her to flee with Paris from Sparta to Troy. Euripides applies the same moral in this play as the others, that is, that love is a dangerous passion that should be revered and sought moderately. The following are a few of my favorite quotes from the play. A fool is he who sacks the towns of men with shrines and tombs, the dead man's hallowed home, for at the last he makes a desert round himself and dies. Of all the prosperous crowd, count none a happy man before he die. The dead alone forget their griefs and never shed a tear. Tis all one never to have been born and to be dead, and better far is death than life with misery, for the dead feel no sorrow any more and know no grief. Who loves once must love always. The manner of burial makes little difference to the dead.